Hello everyone, my name is Yuvraj and today I'm going to talk to you about the white labeling options inside Schema Pro. Specifically, I'm going to talk to you about white labeling in general, what to do, how to do it and what are the usefulness or what is the usefulness of using white labeling inside Schema Pro. So let's first talk about white labeling in general. What is white labeling? Now white labeling is actually a very simple process and very common in the real world as well. It's the process of taking a product designed by one company and then taking it, stamping your own logo on it and then selling it as your own product. That in a sense is what white labeling means. Let me give you a practical example. Here's an image on the screen which represents the Apple processor. This is the A13 Bionic chip, which Apple likes to call it, which is present in the latest iPhones and iPads. Now, surprisingly, or not so surprisingly, Apple actually does not manufacture these. These chips are actually manufactured by a company called TSMC, which stands for Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. So TSMC is the company that actually manufactures the processors for Apple, and then you can loosely say that Apple actually then white labels the processors under their own brand before putting it in their devices. So that was an example of white labeling in the real world. It's actually very common and a lot of products that you actually see, computer monitors, hardware, a lot of products are actually white labeled from other manufacturers without you ever knowing about it. So it's very common in the real world. Now in the WordPress world, white labeling usually means that you take themes and plugins designed by different vendors, put them all together as a bundle and sell that service under your own brand. Now, why would you do it? Or what are the advantages of actually using white labeling? Now, for per people who actually run websites for themselves, it's actually not very advantageous, to be honest. But for people who create websites for clients, for example, you might be a developer who creates websites for clients, or you might be an agency who creates websites for clients, then white labeling is actually very, very useful. First, it helps you simplify the experience of managing a website for your clients especially clients who are not experienced in managing websites might get confused looking at the different plugins and the different support links that they get inside those plugins. So white labeling just makes it simple for you to actually configure it, uh, your plugins and themes in a way so that you are the single person or single point of contact for your client when they're trying to look for support. The second advantage is that it lets you price your services in a fair manner. A lot of times clients will look at just the price of a theme or plugin and wonder why they were charged a much higher amount for the service. Well, it's very difficult to explain to them that the theme or the plugin is not what you charge for, it's the expertise of configuring the plugin and the theme and the knowledge required to do that is what your services are worth. And this white labeling option just lets you avoid this issue altogether. So let's now actually see the white label options inside Schema Pro. So I'll head to the settings of Schema Pro, inside settings, Schema Pro, and inside the options, the white label options are obviously in the white label tab. But before I actually explore the settings, let me go back to the plugins menu and show you the current settings of Schema Pro or what they look like. So here we are inside the plugins menu and you can see Schema Pro right here. And there's a bunch of other information alongside every plugin, including Schema Pro, which will be white labeling. For example, this is the plugin name and also inside the settings, this is also a plugin name or a short name. I'll explain what that means. You have a brief description. You have a version number, which we won't be changing, but just highlighting that. You have the URL or the name of the agency that created the plugin. And also, if you have a separate website for the plugin, then the URL can be entered here. So these are the options that we can actually configure when you are accessing the white label options. So let's get back to the white label options and I'll show you how to actually optimize or change and modify them. So we head back to settings, Schema Pro. And now I'll head to the white label options. So these are the options that exactly what we just saw. You have a plugin name, you have a plugin short name, you have a plugin description, an agency or author name, and also an agency or author URL. So I'll pause the video for a second and I'll fill in this information with the white label options or white label settings that I wanted to demonstrate this with and I'll show you how it looks when you actually save the settings. So I'll be back in a second. So I'm back and these are the settings that I've actually chosen for this, just for demonstration. These are just demonstration settings. These are not something that you need to do. I'm just giving an example. So plugin name, I've chosen Advanced Schema Markup Plugin. 
And for the short name, I've just purposely made it a little smaller just to demonstrate where it actually shows up. So I've just made a bit of an abbreviation. I've changed the plugin description. I've changed the agency name and I've also changed the agency URL. So let's save the settings and let's see what happens. So instantly, the first thing that I see is that the short name is actually changed and reflecting here and also in the settings. So this is where the short name will look or short name will appear. So if you want to make a specific option or specific name appear inside the settings and also here, then that is what you need to choose. Now let's head to the actual plugins menu and see what the settings have changed like. So inside the plugins menu, now we see that the schema pro plugin has been renamed to the advanced schema markup plugin. The description is changed and the other options have changed as well. You can also see the URL uh, in the bottom, you'll see a small uh, preview of the URL as well. So the URL is also reflecting here. So as you see, it was actually very easy to white label schema pro in just a few minutes and you have complete control over the plugin name the url and all kinds of branding and there's no trace of uh, schema pro on inside the settings that can actually tell your customers that you actually use schema pro and it's not a custom made plugin now there is one catch if you actually go back to the settings and again to advanced schema markup in this case not schema pro you'll see that the white label options are still available so if you're customers end up going in this section, they'll actually find out that this is a white label plugin. Now, obviously there's a workaround or there's a solution for that. That's not something we haven't considered. And that was already present in settings, but I just didn't cover it because obviously I wanted to cover it at this stage. So that is the option of hide white label settings. And as you can see, the setting is quite obvious. It actually hides the white label options from Schema Pro. So let me enable this setting, save changes, and I'll show you what happens. And as you can see, the plugin has changed or the settings are saved, are saved. The white label options are still the same, but you don't have the white label options now. It's completely disappeared. And even if you go to the plugins menu once again, all the white label changes that you made or the settings you changed for white labeling are still in effect. And now the white label options are completely disappeared. The second important thing to understand about Schema Pro's white label settings is how to make any changes to these settings if you hide the settings. Now, obviously, you might need to make any changes in the future if you change the name of your agency, if you change the URL of your website, or you just want to change the name that you used in the plugin or in the white label settings, then you need to change the settings. But if the settings are hidden, how do you access them? Well, let me tell you. All you got to do is first deactivate the plugin like this, you'll notice that the plugin actually reverts back to its old name. That is because when the plugin is deactivated, none of the files can be loaded. So the settings that you just change cannot be loaded. So the plugin has to revert back to its original name. But all you have to do again now is just activate the plugin. And the plugin will go back to the name that you selected. Now, if you head to the settings, you'll notice that the white label settings are now available once again. And you can make any changes to the settings as you just configured them earlier or as I demonstrated them earlier in this demonstration. And once you've made all the changes, you can hide the settings once again by enabling or checking this checkbox and saving your changes. And once again, the white label settings are now gone. Now, as you just saw, uh, the white label options actually work really well and they are very easy to configure. But what about the scenario where you actually grant the admin access to your clients and they accidentally enable or disable the plugin on their own? They might be able to discover the white label options in that case, which is not ideal. Well, there is actually a workaround to that and all you need to do is add a single line of code to your WP config file. I'll put up the code on the screen, which you need to add to your WP config file, and also a link to a blog post, which explains the process in a little bit more detail. So as long as this code is present in your WP config file, the white label options will not show up, no matter how many times the plugin is activated or deactivated. Now, one common question that we get from a lot of our customers is that, does the white labeling options actually change some of the code or functionality of Schema Pro? Well, the answer to that is no. 
White labeling is just a cosmetic change and it just changes the name of the plugin that appears in the admin area, but the rest of the plugin just remains exactly the same. And that's for good reason, because if there were any changes made inside the code, then WordPress won't be able to recognize uh, Schema Pro and any updates that we push out won't be recognized and you won't be able to update the plugin that way. So that's why no changes are ever made to the code, the functionality and completely uh, everything remains the same. If you'd like to check it, you can actually go to the posts and check out any of your posts on your website while the plugin is actually white label. Let's check this page out. I'll switch to the tab. And if I check the source code and I look for schema pro inside, I can still see it. Just to clarify, most clients will never check the source code of the website. So you probably don't have to worry about this. Now, if you even want to restrict that behavior, then it is possible to do so. And here's a blog post on our website, which explains the process on how to achieve it. And if you didn't notice, the schema pro uh, name that you saw in the code was just added as comments. And if you add this bunch of code to your child themes functions.php file, then that comments will also be removed. So that will make schema pro completely or fully white label. I'll put up the code snippet as well as the URL of this page on the screen right now so you can check it out. With that, I think I've covered all the settings in the white label options inside Schema Pro. Uh, if you still have any questions or if you are having any issues with Schema Pro, just head to our website and open a support ticket and we'll help you out as quickly as possible. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel Brainstorm Force because we create helpful videos just like this one on a regular basis and you don't want to miss the next one. So click the bell icon to receive notifications for new videos as well. Once again, my name is Yuvraj and I hope to see you in the next video.